When Scott DeMore was fired from TNA Wrestling, I had said, keep an eye on the first domino. Who is going to be that first domino that's going to dictate what free agency is going to look like going forward for TNA? Now, we thought it might potentially be Steve Macklin, but in this case, it is the Motor City Machine Guns. It is Alex Shelley. It is Chris Saban, two guys who for the majority of 2023 were wearing their two major championships. And now we've come to the point where it is being reported that these contracts are up and these guys have stated that they will not be resigning a full-time deal, that they are open, excuse me, open to continuing the relationship with TNA, but that they will no longer be the priority. Ladies and gentlemen, they have now set the standard of what free agency is going to look like going forward. They have the power. The power is in the hands of the wrestlers when it comes to negotiating with TNA. That's why everyone's on these handshake deals. Everyone's saying, well, I'm not really looking for looking to sign right now. That is like the dude who is dating a decent looking chick and saying, I'm not really looking for anything right now. But then when the hot chick shows up the next week, they're now in a relationship. That's what TNA has become. They're just the decent looking chick and the the guys aren't looking for a relationship. These two have set the standard of being one foot in, one foot out. They have told essentially what they're telling Anthem here. I'm not speaking for them, but is that you guys can't promise us consistency. So we're not going to promise you consistency. If you can pull out the rug from underneath us and fire the boss that we all love so much, just like that, without even a good, well-thought-out explanation, then we're not going to return that same loyalty to you. And that's essentially what's happened here. And this could be as I said, this is the first domino. This can be what free agency looks like going forward. Because remember, TNA has the right of first refusal when it comes to these independent dates and other opportunities for wrestlers that make money. And you've got to keep in mind, some of these guys, the majority of them are getting paid per appearance. And I don't know what every deal looks like, obviously. I do know, factually, that some wrestlers are just making their indie rate. That same wrestler can go do an indie show, make the same pay, and also sell merchandise. So there's not a lot of negotiating power here, it seems. It seems that some wrestlers are potentially even taking pay cuts to be a part of TNA. Now you exchange that for exposure. You know, but They're letting these guys know we're going to go make our money the way we need to. You know, I would imagine I I, I'm pulling this out of my ass that the wrestlers don't receive pay-per-view bonuses. They could. I, I highly doubt it, but they could. But let's just say they don't. Why would Alex Shelley and Chris Saban take a booking the night of rebellion. Well, let, let me rephrase that. Why would they go work rebellion when they can go take an independent bookie, booking and maybe make more if you're talking per date dollars? So I think this is a bad sign. And I think most fans, not most fans, but a good number of fans are just going to be like, okay, whatever. You know, they don't see that this is, is very much possibly going to be a part of a bigger issue. What uh, Sean Ross Sapp was saying was that Alex Shelley was promised a substantial pay raise from Scott DeMore. Perhaps perhaps Chris Saban was too, because here's the thing. Here is, here is the thing. When your contract is up, you should be asking for more money because your stake does rise within the company. What I mean by that is that every time you're booked on a show, if you're every time you're a, a fixture in TNA programming, you become 
deeper ingrained into the brand of that company, the identity of that company. You're not the person going into that contract. You were coming out of it. It doesn't matter if you're Dango. When Dango showed up his first day and he was just recycling the uh, old WWE gimmick and he was walking around Santino and he attacked Santino at one point, fast forward to him now. It's a complete different gimmick. He's he's offering something different to the show. So when his time comes up and he's like, hey, I'm going to renegotiate, he should ask for more because he is not the same person going in that he was coming out. So these two guys, you know, going into their current contracts, they were the Motor City Machine Guns. They were the however many time tag team champions. Now coming out of these deals, Chris Saban's like, I have X amount of world title, uh, excuse me, X amount of X division reigns. Alex Shelley was like, I was your guy for the majority of 2023. They should be asking for more. And I don't think Anthem wants to do that. I don't think they want to give them more. I don't think they want to give anybody more. So why, why would these guys give them their 100% if they're not getting the 100% from Anthem? And, you know, the other thing that was kind of reported here was that there's going to be more per date deals rather than salary. And I don't think fans are prepared to talk about this. TNA fans aren't prepared to hear this. This is not a full-time wrestling company. Now, there are some people making salaries. There's some wrestlers making salaries. You know, I, I don't know what percentage of the wrestlers do. Obviously, the Mooses, the Jordan Graces, the Eddie Edwards. I would say the majority of the wrestlers probably do make per-appearance deals, though. I mean, take take your job, my job, all our jobs. We get paid when we go to work. We don't get paid to not work. Obviously, unless you're on a salary. But this is not a foreign concept to say, hey, when you show up to work, we will pay you. We're not going to pay you if you're not working. This is a part-time wrestling company. TNA fans don't want to hear that. That is a harsh reality. It is a part-time wrestling company. It is like my military service. I am at this point. Yeah, I have, you know, a good 17 and a half active years. I am a fucking part timer at this point. I am. I go in two to three days a month. I can't ask. I can't assume the government should pay me my fucking salary as if I was active. That's not how that shit works. So this isn't a you know a business model that I think is wrong. Fans want it to be wrong. Fans want part time. I mean, excuse me, full time deals. They want living wages because if the company offers that, that means they can make more competitive offers for free agents. Totally understood. It isn't the reality. It is not the reality. They really shouldn't be offering a living wage to anybody if we're talking about good business. But they do because that's kind of a necessity if you're trying to you know, compete in the wrestling space. That's just the way it is. I'm fairly certain Corb Bauer at MLW has had his couple guys at the top where he's like, you know, I have to pay them a living wage. I'm sure that is the case. Billy Corgan does it with some of his guys at the top of the NWA. But this is not a full-time wrestling company. Now, with that being said, you have to bridge the gap between I'm offering Will Ospreay six figures and I'm offering uh, Wrestler X at the bottom of the card their indie rate. You got you have to bridge that gap. There are rumors right now about Mercedes Monet and what she makes. I know the rumor is ten million. It's not ten million. No one makes ten million. Um, they've now that some more information has come down, they said it's not even five. But some of the rumblings that have come out, while there are some that are happy for her saying she set the standard for what women should make, there's other wrestlers also saying we don't make 10% of what she makes. 
And they're supposed to compete with her in the ring. They're supposed to cut promos that they believe, you know, that they have to make sound like they they believe to their heart, in their heart, that they can beat her. You can't feud someone making six figures with someone making $200 for the day. So I think you have to bridge that gap when it comes to the pay. But what do I know? Because I'm not on the business side of this company. I'm not on any side of this company. I'm a fucking fan. I'm a podcaster. But I think I know enough about good business. So I do think that this is the standard. I think the Motor City Machine Guns have set the standard that this is how free agency is going to go going forward. Steve Macklin, his deal coming up, he may not, he may not leave, but he may not give them that same level of commitment. You might say, why should I give you guys the, the right of first refusal on my dates? That's what I think is going to happen going forward. This, this is the first domino, folks. And uh, the people who are re-signing long-term, I think, are going to, for the most part, be the wrestlers who don't have other options. Whether they just don't have the talent, or there are some guys and girls who do have the talent, but there's just not a spot for them elsewhere. But this is the standard. These are the first two dominoes to fall. This is likely going to be the effect going forward. And uh, when these these Moose contracts come up, these Jordan Grace contracts come up, you know, I just don't see these wrestlers re-signing. Seems like they're kind of there long term, but I just don't see it happening. And these guys have a life, especially Alex Shelley, I believe, has a life outside of this. He has a, a, a shoot job outside of this. So now he's going to control his destiny. I don't know what Chris Saban got, has going on. He may wrestle full time. I don't really know. They might be like the Wolves were, where Eddie Edwards wrestled, wrestled, wrestled. Davy Richard wrestled and then had his uh, his schooling, medical schooling on the outside and, and being an EMT and then ultimately being a doctor or whatever. You know, these guys may be like that, but this is the standard. And um, you just got to. You've got to brace for it. You got to buckle up. But the, the fans out there saying, you know, more full time deals, more full time deals. It is bad business, whether you want to believe it or not, to offer a full time deal for part time work. 